why we're making films. I think for both of us, there's a part of it that's just a search to learn. We have our own personal reasons that probably connect on the same and slightly different ways. And for me, it's just finding connection for people, connecting to people. And I think for me, it's a, it's a little bit different. And you know, as anthropologists, I've spent years in the field, kind of in different situations, trying to understand the human dynamics, why people make certain decisions, how societies are organized and respond to certain things. One of the downsides to being an academic is the follow through. I could write a book about this, this subject for remittance. And if a few thousand people bought and read that book, I, that would be a pretty big accomplishment. There is something frustrating about that. For me personally, you know, that was why I went into film. We can make this movie and millions of people will watch it. I get to bring my academic interests and sensibilities into the film project, which I think marry really nicely with Joel's non-academic sort of background, his film background, his creative background, also just his personality, right? We get kind of high-strung, kind of intense academic coming in with really chilled out, gentle filmmaker, and somehow we managed to make some really special films out of that. I get to play the good cop, he gets to play the bad cop, <laughs> and then yeah. I get to, I'm always the bad guy, I said, I'm the one that yells at people, I'm the one at the end of this, at the rap party, no one hugs me, everyone hugs Joel, and they bring him gifts, and they send him like that. <laughs> you do overdo it, but yeah. Needle Through Brick was uh, kind of our first intersection. I had the idea of doing a documentary about sort of traditional Kung Fu masters in Borneo. You have some of these old men who kind of fled China, sort of, in some cases, you know, decades ago, and uh, we're still practicing their cultural traditions in, in Malaysia. And so this guy James Adolphus, our, our mutual friend, him and I kind of set up the team and he actually brought Joel out on set to, to Borneo to help with the project. So that really kind of kicked off our, our filmmaking kind of partnership. David, we shot that a couple years ago. David's about a, a 10 year old Muslim boy who develops a friendship with an Orthodox Jewish boy who mistakes him for being Jewish. Part of what people have liked about David, you know, were, were the details, and we get actually a lot of credit that we don't deserve. Especially in the films that we're doing, which deal with a lot of uh, cultural uh, details, and that's such an important aspect of what we're trying to do here. Using, in part or full, people from the neighborhood to tell their stories is such a part of it. And so they bring things that we can't even, we couldn't even think of, because it's them, and it's something they've grown in, it's in their blood. We initially thought about doing it as a documentary. I think one of the reasons why we didn't want to do that is A, uh, I think a lot of the subject matter is very sensitive. And while we've gotten tremendous amounts of personal stories from people, I think people will be much less comfortable telling those stories to the camera themselves and exposing themselves. Especially as some of these stories deal with issues of abuse or maybe it's a woman who's been having a really beautiful relationship here but she's actually married and you know she has a husband and family at home and back in the film he just doesn't want them to know about this. We figured if we kind of took a lot of these stories and molded them into a, a fiction, a narrative film and we got people to act them, even if it's the same people, they have this this safety net, right? They can say, hey, I was just acting in the film. All the films that we've done, we've had fairly small budgets. If you don't spend a lot of money on the film, you can't lose a lot of money on the film. Uh, but then, of course, you have to make other decisions, other creative decisions, practical decisions to get the job done. I think coming from a doc background or having done documentary work where you can't control any of the variables, you have to be really just kind of picking things up as you go, being comfortable working in an area where you can't control it. Part of the mantra is, I mean, I remember being at this independent film panel a few years back before making David, and I was listening to this one director, Brad Anderson, and he says, you know what, you just gotta do it. And I think that's kind of the mentality that's helping us in remittance. You just have to do it. If you get too worried about it, trying to line everything up, waiting for the perfect script, waiting for the perfect this, that, whatever, it probably never happens. So you just kinda say, you know what, we're making a movie. It'll happen on this day and with this budget, and we'll tell the best story we can within those limits, but we're making this movie now. We're just gonna put one step, one foot in front of the other, and something will happen, and enjoy the process, and that's as much as we can do.